Hello learners, I welcome you all in DLED program of NIOS. I, Dr. Neera Gautam, head of the department of Anugra Narayan College, Patna, am going to discuss with you a very important topic of course code 509. The topic is strategies for social science cooperative learning method. Before going into the detail, I would like to share with you the outline of the discussion. These are definition of cooperative learning, characteristics of cooperative learning, cooperative learning strategies, advantages of cooperative learning, disadvantages of cooperative learning and in the last conclusion. Learners, we all know that the ongoing classroom system is content centered and teacher dominated. The teacher is the repository of the subject knowledge who transacts the curriculum in the classroom. He is the person who makes the learning possible in the classroom by sharing all kinds of the information and these informations are only the redeemed tidbits of the knowledge. By learning through this method. The learners are tempted to get more and more degrees, diplomas, certificates and appreciations by excelling each other or by outwitting their peer in the classroom. It creates a sense of hatredness and jealousy among the learners and it also leads to Competitive environment. Cooperative learning says no to these practices. In other words, we can say that cooperative learning is opposite to these kind of the practices. Learners. Now I would like to define what does the term cooperative learning stand for. The term cooperative learning means that learning in a group. Or you can say that when the learners sit together and perform some group activity for accomplishment of some task that is a cooperative learning. There are good number of the characteristics of cooperative learning. The first one is learner centeredness. It is well known to all of us that learners learn better when they are involved in some group activity. In a group activity, there is the exchange of the ideas or sharing of the opinion. Therefore, the cooperative learning advocates the active participation of the learners in the classroom. The second one is constructive ideology. The learners are exploratory in nature and they actively participate in the learning process. Cooperative learning encourages, encourages the students to formulate their own ideas or develop their own way of understanding the content. Next one is about the role of the teacher. Here the teacher is not the expert of the subject, rather he is the facilitator of learning. He has to make an stage or platform where the learner can accomplish his task. After that, an important characteristics of cooperative learning, there is an emphasis upon the social learning. Learning does not place, take place in isolation. Here the learners can learn a good number of the values or skills. The learners can learn empathy how to help each other, sympathy, interdependence and so on. Cooperative learning has one more important characteristics that is group goals and individual accountability. Here the learners are responsible for their own learning outcomes and moreover 
the students learning can be evaluated in the terms of group performance or you can say that students learning can be evaluated how much the group goals have been achieved so far. In this session, I am going to explain what are the different strategies of cooperative learning. A very important strategy of cooperative learning is the jigsaw method. In a jigsaw method, the students are the provided opportunity to become expert in the particular subject and share that knowledge with their peers. How it can be accomplished or how it can be done? The first step, you have to break the classroom into groups. Ask the students to make small groups and allocate each one a number, which may be 1, 2, 3 and so on. This is their home group. Ask the students to find the same as them and create a separate group. This is their expert group. Assign each expert group a concept, a framework or a theory to master. The second step, report back to the home group. Ask the students to explain their piece of information, ensuring that all their group members understand the information. Discuss with the home group. Ask the students to connect with various pieces and put together the whole jigsaw so that the students are able to see where each part fits into the bigger picture. The second method of cooperative learning or a second strategy of cooperative learning is problem solving method. In this method, the children work in a small group to solve a problem. The coordination and agreement between the members of the group is essential at all the stages. The problem should stimulate argument and should have the multiple dimensions. The third strategy talks about group investigation method. In this method, children work in a group to investigate a given problem. The investigation method involves four steps. The groups are formed and the problem to be investigated is selected. Each group is assigned one duty. Each group conducts experiments records observations, makes analysis and draws conclusion. All the groups present their experiments, observations, analysis for discussion in the presence of a teacher. The teacher guides these groups to compare their observations and results. The teacher draws conclusion related to the problem. The last one is project method. One major project can be assigned to the whole class and its subtask can be assigned to a small group. The teacher observes the group work, cooperation between the group members and provides guidance to the st students whenever required. For example, if a teacher gives a project to the learners regarding display of artwork, in the school. A good number of the groups may be formed. One group may be given the task of arrangement of the tables where the artwork can be kept in a safe mode. The second group may be given the task of preparation of the charts, models and other related material or some specimen also. The third group may be given the task of putting all the things on the table in an orderly manner on the day of display. The fourth one may be given the task of guiding the visitors 
who are coming to see the display or making them comfortable in the campus who are coming to see them to see the display in this way the project method can be accomplished now i am going to discuss with you how the groups are formed in cooperative learner since the whole cooperative learning process revolves around the groups the groups may be formed in three ways depending upon the composition the first one is a homogeneous all the group members are more or less similar in terms of attainment or ability for example a group consisting of high achievers or low achievers this is a homogeneous group heterogeneous group group consisting of children of all ability level that is good average or poor the last one is the mixed type group selecting group is done one high achiever or two low achievers it means there are three ways of grouping the children in a cooperative learning method now we discuss about the advantages of cooperative learning the first important aspect related to this is that it provides environment where the students seek help and accept tutoring from their peers the student develop a sense of self confidence and self esteem therefore the promotion of student activities in the classroom is possible through the help of cooperative learning the second one is about the development of high order thinking critical thinking and communication skills among the students in cooperative learning the students learn so many tasks requiring manipulation demonstrative and practical skill on the basis of learning through imitation and observation of the behavior of their peer Th third one is cooperative learning provides interactive model for the classroom teaching it helps in developing healthy interaction among the learners and between teacher and the learner the learners acquire quite positive and healthy attitude towards each other and to the teacher who are always ready for helping them in their task after that opportunities for deeper understanding and insight into the subject matter by discussion in cooperative learning there is always scope for mutual exchange of the ideas and sharing of the views therefore it is very possible for the learners to develop their understanding into the subject matter in a better way in cooperative learning there is a grouping therefore it provides help to the weaker students to improve their performance when grouped with the higher achieving students the weaker students also get some tips or some ideas from the higher achieving students about how to read how to study how to write in other way we can say that the weaker students also get some supplements related to learning or help from the higher achievers next one improvement in the learning environment of the classroom by providing anxiety free and non competitive environment we all know that in a competitive environment there is a stress or anxiety among the students how to perform better how to do it better even they are involved in various kind of the unfair means to get more and more marks but here the learning occurs in a group the learning occurs by helping each other therefore there is no tension and no competition the competition has been replaced by the word cooperation though cooperative learning is a very important strategy in the schools but it has some constraints important constraint is the time the teachers are overloaded with the work many at times 
they have to complete their course within fixed time frame in this context it is not possible for a teacher to teach each lesson or each subject with the help of the cooperative learning method second one the teachers lack expertise to try such innovative methods most of our teachers are trained either they are having the degrees of b ed or m ed but in such courses there is no provision of training in how to conduct cooperative learning the teachers hesitate to try such methods also they fear their position as a facilitator of learning because in the normal classroom situation they have been always a expert of the subject the textbooks are not written in view of the requirements of cooperative learning textbook are the sources with the help of which curriculum is transacted into the classroom by the teacher but our textbooks are devoid of project work or handouts or any other supplements which are base of cooperative learning students feel uncomfortable in making their own attempts in the acquisition of information students are in the habit of seeing the teacher in a authoritative manner and they expect from their teachers that the teacher will come to the class and narrate everything or furnish the information related to the topic here the whole responsibility goes to the learner about their learning therefore they don't want to take risk or they feel some uncomfort in making their own attempts in acquisition of the information the learners feel low ability may be dominated by the high achieving learners in a cooperative learning the learners of various kinds sit together many at times the low achievers can be overshadowed by the performance of the high achievers or the low achievers may feel neglected in a group also next one is about the difficulties for the students to feel their individual responsibilities here the students feel that the teacher is a facilitator of learning it means that he is not doing his duties he is skipping his duties and he is saving his time and energy therefore the students are apathetic to resort this method of learning now i am going to conclude cooperative learning strategy may prove fruitful on account of the benefits derived from it but the teachers should be exposed to the training through in service programs they should know from where and how to start cooperative learning technique in the classroom there is a need to bring changes in the mindset of the learners that sharing information and ideas in a group make the learning enjoyable this is all about cooperative learning thank you thank you learners thank you so much